I will, uh, I'll start with my background, which maybe will tell you a little bit, uh, just a little bit more about why I'm here. Uh, I graduated from the uh, law school in 1999. Um, and because we're lawyers, or I'm a lawyer and you're aspiring lawyers, you have to tell everybody what you've done because you can't validate yourself as a human being until you've said, here, what, here are my credentials. So while I was at the law school, um, I, uh, I studied a lot. I, I was on the Law Review, and then I, uh, the year after I graduated, I clerked for David Ebell on the Tenth Circuit in Denver. The year after that, I clerked for Chief Justice Rehnquist on the Supreme Court of the United States. Um, and after that, that was 2001, I finished that, and I uh, went into private practice in Washington. Uh, I was at a firm called Baker Botts in Washington for about five years, doing litigation and appellate litigation. Uh, for the last almost five years, I've been at a, been at a litigation boutique in Washington, uh, where I'm a partner. Uh, the firm is called Robbins Russell. Um, there are a bunch of other names after that, but I'll spare you. Um, and what I do is, for a day job, I'm an appellate lawyer. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's how I make my living. I uh, argue appeals in the courts of appeals, state Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court. On the side, in my spare time, uh, if there's such a thing, I help teach the Supreme Court litigation here, uh, Supreme Court litigation clinic here. This is our fifth year. Uh, of the clinic, I think that's right, and uh, our best year uh, by any objective measure uh, as well. We'll have, this year we'll have four cases in the Supreme Court, so to give you a rough sense, I'm sure you're all well versed in this by now, but the Supreme Court gets about seven to 8,000 requests each year to hear cases. They grant about 75 or 80 of those cases, um, and we have four of them. So uh, we've been very successful. We have a great team of people. It's uh, me, another gentleman from private practice named John Elwood, um, and then two, we have two professors, full-time professors, who are uh, directors as well, Dan Ortiz and right now Toby Heightens. Uh, and what we do is we uh, look for cases, it sounds simple, but we look for cases to take up to the Supreme Court with our students. We litigate those cases and we, we really try to win them. Um, I'm more comfortable here at the podium today because in exactly, well not exactly, well almost exactly, uh, 96 hours, I'll be doing this at the Supreme Court of the United States to argue. Um, I hope you'll, you'll take from that two main points. One is we really do litigate cases in the Supreme Court, I don't make that up. Uh, the other is that even though I have a Supreme Court argument in four days, I love coming back, um, we're not coming back, it's a longer story, but I live here in Charlottesville, but um, I love coming to the law school and telling people about the school and about the class. Um, I think you'll find that the school, the more you get to know about it, inspires uh, an intense loyalty by, among its students. And not because they're uh, you know, really good in the development office at chasing you down, although they are. Um, it's, it's because people enjoy their time here and they enjoy their courses and there's a real camaraderie among the students. I'm not going to say this is the only law school that has that. It's not. But, um, but I've, I've met a lot of lawyers from a lot of other elite law schools and nobody has this uh, if nobody inspires this sort of affinity in their students. Uh, and so I'll come back when I should be, uh, believe me, I should be deep, deep uh, in my argument preparation to spend a little bit of time with you guys uh, to tell you a little bit about the school and the clinic. Okay, how do we work? Well, we're comprised, the, the, student, the, the clinic is composed entirely of 3L students, uh, about 13 a year. So it's not a huge class. It's not a class you would sit here and say, oh, I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, you have to apply to be in it, and we consider a variety of factors in that, but um, without exception, we look for students who are driven and motivated. Because especially when you're in your 3L year, the, the process that we put you through is very intense. We uh, spend a lot of time in the summer before you start your 3L year trying to identify cases. In fact, we'll do that off and on during the year to keep our docket uh, filled. But we'll be trolling through the courts of appeals, the state Supreme Court, looking for cases that have potential to go up to the Supreme Court. You help us find those. And then uh, my least favorite part of the job is cold calling people uh, who have uh, cases in the Court of Appeals, usually that they've just lost. And you introduce yourself and you say, hi, you just lost this case. Would you like to give that case to me <laughs> to argue? Um, r remarkably, that actually goes well more often than not. Um, but it is, that's how we do it. We, we just we reach out. We say, we'd love to work with you on the case. We take the case. We obviously, we do it for free, um, which is a nice selling point. But then we, we turn you guys loose, and that's why we need motivated, driven students. We rely on the students to do research, drafting. We go over draft after draft after draft, research after research after research. We leave no stone unturned. That's, again, one of our great assets is if you're an overworked lawyer with a case that might be headed to the Supreme Court, and I can say, well, look, here are 13 
uh, highly motivated, eager beavers to do all the ugly scut work you don't want to do, um, that's pretty attractive. And that's, what, that's the value that we add. Um, we don't just work the students, though. It's not just misery for you. Um, the, the, the virtue of it is it's a small collegial class. We actually usually, when we have multiple cases going on, we'll break up into teams. So we'll frequently work in groups of three or four. And so you get a very close working relationship with the instructor, which is theoretically attractive to you, um, and with your students. And it's a real, it, it's unlike most of your work in law school. It's very different in the pace. Most of your work in law school is you in the book. Occasionally you'll get a study group, although judge for yourself the wisdom of such things. Um, but at the end of the day, it's you in the exam, it's you in the paper. Um, it, it, most of law practice, in fact, is typically sort of monastic in, in a lot of what, at least in litigation, a lot of what you do. So the nice thing about the clinic is you're in these teams, it's very collaborative, we're trading sections around, we're editing each other's works, uh, work, and you're getting a lot of exposure to, uh, to something that even under the best of circumstances you won't see a lot of in your first couple years out of law school. Uh, the instructors, I'd like to think, were pretty um, uh, talented and, and accomplished people. Um, again, because we're lawyers, I have to tell you how awesome we are. Um, all four of us clerked on the Supreme Court. All four of us have argued multiple cases in the Supreme Court. Um, we, this is what we do. Uh, for those of us from private practice, this is obviously not um, how I feed my kids. So I do this because I love it and because it's important to me and, and it's interesting. Um, and that's a great experience, I think, for our students. We're driven, we're, you know, everything that goes out under, with my name on it or the clinic's name on it is letter perfect, just top quality work. And I don't mean good student work, I mean it is top quality work. And uh, that's a great experience. All right, so again, what do you get out of it? Why on earth would you subject yourself to this? Um, Law school is a great job of training your mind to think in a certain way, but then the actual practice of law, unless you go to a law school unlike this one, the actual practice of law actually requires practice. It requires doing it and repetition and exposure to it. Um, the clinical offerings give you sort of a taste of that while you're still immersed in the theoretical world of an elite legal education. In, uh, in the case of the Supreme Court Clinic, I hate to break this to you, you're not going to be arguing uh, or writing Supreme Court briefs in your first year out of law school. It's, it's highly unlikely. I mean, you, you occasionally read a story uh, about somebody very young who got to do something very exciting. The reason that's a news story is because it doesn't happen. Um, but you'll be working on Supreme Court cases. So on Tuesday, um, as it turns out, I'm arguing a case and Dan Ortiz, my colleague in the clinic, is arguing another case the same day. So uh, I think all told, 11 of our 13 students will be able to join us in the Supreme Court. They'll be sitting in the Supreme Court watching us hopefully argue well the cases that they help brief. In terms of a lev the level of participation and investment in a Supreme Court case, there's really no chance to get that um, that early uh, in your career. And so it's a great opportunity for the students. A lot of the clinical offerings you know, in, in, in the various areas uh, that, that the school has them do the same thing, where you really do get sort of a jump start on that. The, the thing that every student takes away, regardless of where you go clerk or, or where you go work, is you're a better writer when you leave our class, um, whether you want to be or not. I mean, most people who are in this school are going to be good writers, or, or at least you're a good writer compared to your peers, uh, wherever you're coming from, be it work or straight from undergrad. Um, you, you, you have to have some communication ability. That's the theory of the LSAT and your undergraduate training and, and all of that. Legal writing is a different animal. Um, it's not entirely different. And, Never forget that it's not entirely different. It's okay to write in plain English. Never use the word here with. It is, it's not necessary. Um, but there's a different style, pace, tone, structure to legal writing. And you'll get in your legal writing course, you'll, you'll get the building blocks for great legal writing. But then there's a lot more to it beyond that. I mean, that's why, that's why uh, you know, that's why you start out and you have to practice the law, et cetera. We, we really do cram it down your throats, good writing from, from the very beginning of the class. And so you'll learn in the course of you know, going through a draft, for example, we'll spend time on individual word choice. Of course, we spend time on structure and analysis and things like that. Um, but we'll sit down and say, do you want to say this was merely or just? And I kid you not, we'll spend minutes and minutes talking about whether you'll say that is just you know, the correct answer or merely the correct answer. Does it really matter? Well, I mean. Is the case on Tuesday going to turn on whether I use the word merely or just? No. But over the course of a brief, you know, an elegant, well-written brief, like these are tough cases. And this is the difference between good legal writing and really, really good legal writing. And we try to give you that. And I think all of our students will tell you, or 
most of them, they would certainly tell you if I were here with them, that they definitely came out of the class feeling better prepared to write, to write persuasively, to write advocacy as opposed to just mere exposition. And these are the things that when you get to whatever you're going to do with your degree are going to be uh, hugely valuable. So, for example, the, it's easy, to, it's easy, it's not easy, it won't seem easy. It is easier to write the legal memo that says, on the one hand this, on the other hand that, the better answer is probably this. This is what judges do in that sense. I mean, that's, that's, they're supposed to, you know, call it how they see it, but they, they sort of acknowledge the here and the there. Um, when you're a lawyer, your job is very different. It's to advocate, and, and there's a much more complicated scenario, right? You have to figure out, well, how much of my opponent's argument do I need to acknowledge? Like, what portion of that do I want to acknowledge is valid? How can I recast that? How can I reframe that? Getting that skill, that's really hard to acquire. It's especially really hard to acquire in your first couple years of practice when someone more senior to you is probably doing a lot of the drafting or rewriting a lot of your stuff. Um, so you'll come away from this uh, experience beyond your years in the clinic, I think, with a, with a skill set that'll serve you well. How does it serve you well? Well, I'll give, I'll give you a, a, an illustration. I'll give you the basic principle in an illustration. Um, the more valuable you are to your employer, the better your life is in, uh, in the legal world. I actually love my job, and I'm not embarrassed to tell you that. It's, you won't find a lot of litigators who work as many hours as I work who will say that. Um, but I really like it, um, and I've always really enjoyed my job for the 11 years I've been in, almost 11 years I've been in private practice. Uh, why do I like it? Because the kind of stuff that I do is interesting, it's challenging, it's analytically very complicated, and I like it, and that, what I'm not doing is tabbing through boxes of documents or, um, you know, sitting in on endless conference calls. To each his own, maybe there are people who like that, but I'm not one of them. I was able to demonstrate relatively early in my career that really the highest and best use for me is um, in a room with my books and my computer um, working through briefs um, and eventually arguing those cases and you know th that's how I make my living now and that to me is very interesting. If you are that kind of person and you want to be a litigator and if you want to be an appellate lawyer, you want to develop those skills as early as humanly possible because the sooner you become a good writer, the sooner you are recognized by your peers as a good writer, the sooner you stop doing the parts of your job that you don't enjoy. I mean, th th that is just the way that certainly private practice works, but generally most, uh, most practicing lawyers uh, would tell you that, that, that if you want to be a writer and you want to learn how to be a good writer, the sooner you can show people that, the better. Um, I guess a couple of final notes on the school. Um, I think you'll find. I mean, I think you'll find that the faculty here is the most collegial anywhere. Here's the best way I can illustrate it. I'm a lecturer. I'm a, a mere adjunct the, in in the in the realm of faculty hierarchies, right? I'm he, you're right here, and I'm down here, right? <laughs> there is no lecturers weekend. They don't invite me. They, I don't even have a name tag, right? <laughs> but but when I'm here at the school. Um, uh, I mean, the, the faculty welcome me and my colleagues who are other, you know, uh, lecturers and adjuncts, uh, not, like, not like equals in that sense, but really it, it's, it's a very welcoming environment. That's how they treat each other. I mean, when, when we go to lunch together, you see it. There are, they are the kind of people who are um, unbelievably approachable, very warm, friendly. It is a really supportive environment. The people who are here, by and large, want to be here. I'm talking about the faculty. They want to be here. They want to be here with the students. Um, they like, generally speaking, they like Charlottesville. Um, and this is why you should like Charlottesville. It is far, far more enjoyable to come to law school in a place where the people are happy. Um, that's not to say that there aren't huge nerds in the student body who are studying all the time. Um, Ask anybody, right? Um, there, are, there are plenty of us. And it's not to say it's not an academically intense place. It is, and it's very challenging. But the people who are here are not miserable. Um, and beyond not miserable, they actually enjoy it. Uh, my, some of my very, very best friends uh, in life are law school classmates of mine and people who are not like me teaching here or anything like that. They all have, even, even the sort of quirky ones, all have a real strong attachment to the school because we enjoyed our time here. It's challenging, it's demanding, it can be difficult, and it's expensive, but it is great. It's really an enjoyable experience. Um, is there a bad, can you make a bad decision by going to another law school? Um, I mean, there, w the schools that you all are considering are not, there's no bad decision you can make. You can make degrees of good decisions. But if I were you and I were sitting in your seat, um, 
I would think about how I want to spend the next three years, how, you know, what I want to get out of it, and whether you're going to get more out of it in a place where you're going to be engaged, the people around you will be engaged, the people around you will be happy, um, and then when the weather is like this, it's sort of hard to beat. Um, that's, that's really what the school offers. It's a fantastic education. It's got a broad swath of offerings. Um, but what it offers that no other school, I think, offers is a combination of those things and this um, environment that I think is both collegial, supportive, um, and just actually pleasant, which is, which you <laughs> isn't saying a lot to say that it's pleasant, but it's really, it really makes it a defining feature of the school and of the experience.